Assalamu alaikum. This is Fahim Mahmood with another lecture of Playfulness Good English. Semester 1, where we will learn punctuation. Punctuation, the first thing, full stop. It is used at the end of a simple statement. It's goal today. A simple statement, a full stop, is used. The office was closed. Please be careful. These are the simple statements. At the end of a simple statement, we use full stop. Then we ask some question. When some question is asked. Question mark is used. Who is that? Did you see the show? The sentences beginning with helping verb is, are, am, was, were, has, have, had. Or with the W words. These are the question statements. And end a sentence where some question has been asked. We use question mark. And to express sudden emotion, exclamatory marks or exclamation mark is used. Oh no. Surprise. Some surprise, some wonder, some amazement, some prayer, some curse. In these kind of sentences, exclamation mark is used. Semicolon, this is the sign. Full stop and comma. We can use semicolon between two separate statements which are linked in meaning. Linked in meaning. Ahmed is a very kind person. He visits Ibrahim in hospital every day. So he is showing his kindness by visiting. By visiting Ibrahim. Where the statements are linked in meaning. We can also use a full stop here. A simple full stop will also serve the purpose. So, two similar statements, semicolon is used, where a full stop can also be used. Colon, we can use a colon before an explanation. This is the sign of colon. Explanation, when you want to explain something which has been given in the previous statement or before a list, when we present some kind of list. Vicky felt nervous. He hated the dark. Why he felt nervous? Because he hated the dark. Instead of using the explanatory word, words, because he hated the dark, we use colon to separate these statements and their explanation. There wasn't enough in the fridge. A couple of sausages, some butter, and half a bottle of milk. This is a list of things which were there in the refrigerator. Iqbal wrote many books. Now, colon has been used. It means we are going to give the names of these books. We are giving a list of the books. Bang Edra, Bala Jibril, Zabure Aj, etc., etc. Two usages of colon. We want to explain, give an explanation of the statement we expressed earlier or we want to present a list of things list of things we use colon dash it has become archaic now dash has not been used in many of the uh, uh, compounds words where it was used earlier a dash is rather formal it is sometimes used instead of a colon or semicolon Vicky felt very nervous. There is an explanation where we have used a colon to explain his nervousness. We can also use this dash. I'm having a great time. This is an explanation. There's a lot to do here. This is explanation. For, for where we can use the colon, we can also use a dash to explain or to, to explain the things which we have expressed earlier. 
it is used with an explanation given of the previous state. The famous picture, famous picture. Now, what that famous picture is, which was damaged during the war, is worth thousands of pictures. Now, the actual sentence is the famous picture is worth thousands of pounds. Now, these dashes are used, and in between these dashes, this is the explanation of that famous picture. In such kind of structure of sentences, we use dash. Comma use, we use when we link two statements with and, but, or, 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 or. He was tired and his feet were hurting before and. We use comma. It's really good camera, camera, but before but, we use comma. I can't afford it. Note there are two subjects in each sentence. Two subject he, his feet. It's and I. Two subject in each sentence. When there is only one subject, we don't use comma. If it was the he was tired. He was tired. Just this subject. If there is only one subject in a sentence, we do not use comma to separate the sentence. Daniel sat down and took off his shoes. Now, if the construction was like that. Daniel sat down and he took off his shoes. Then we will place a comma here and he took. He took. In that case, when there are two subjects, Daniel is a subject and he is a subject, we will use comma here. And if there is only one subject in a sentence like this, Daniel sat down and took off his shoes we will not use comma in that construction of sentence. Comma is used with linking words like when or although or in the relative classes. When the office is busy, he has to work late. With two sentences, two clauses, we use comma to separate these clauses. Jack, who lives next to This is a relative Clause are relative pronoun related to Jack. Actually, the sentence is ja Jack is rather strange to me. Now, this is an explanation of who Jack is. A relative class in which Jack has been introduced. In these kind of sentences where a relative clause has been used, a relative now pronoun has been used. We use comma at the start and end of the that clause. Sometimes a comma can separate off an adverb or a phrase. Adverb and its phrase to separate these two, we use comma. She unfortunately has to work late. Unfortunately, she before and after this adverb. It is therefore decided to arrest him. Therefore, adverb and before and after, we use comma to separate adverb and its clauses. The rules about comma are not very exact. In general, commas are more likely around longer phrases with short phrases. Phrases, there is no comma. And we prefer to use comma where phrases are long, but where the phrases are short, we do not use comma. Sometimes she has to work late. To work late. We have used this linking word, but we didn't use any comma. Do not use comma before two expressing purpose. We use comma in a list of more than two. The last two are linked by and. When we are giving a list, we use commas to separate each list from the other one. I went out with Rachel, Vicky, Emma. Comma after Rachel, comma after Vicky, Emma and Matthew. The last two have no comma and they are joined with and. 
this is how we can trace commas between the list of words or names. Quotation marks or speech marks, they may be single or they may be double. They may be single like that or we may uh, use double speech marks like that. At the start of the quoting words or at, at the end where the quotation ends. In direct speech, we use speech marks, he said. These are the words spoken by someone. I'm going to the market. To quote exact word, what one has said, we use speech marks. Quotation marks or speech marks can also be used around titles of movies or any magazine or newspapers. Have you seen the movie? The hundreds. This is the title. To separate it from the rest of the sentence and to tell that this is a, a heading of some film which he is uh, uh, quoting or uh, telling here, speech marks are used. Hyphen. It is used in these structure. Compound nouns like eating ice cream, it is a compound. Compound expression. Compound expression before a noun and oven ready meat. This is a noun before a noun. Compound oven ready. It's an expression. Known from a phrasal verb. Where a noun has been formed from a phrasal verb like ready for take off. This is a noun, but it is a phrasal verb also. Noun plus ing. Interested in rock climbing. This is a noun or gerund with ing. ING words also become nouns or adjectives. Before the last word of a compound word, 126, last word of a compound word. This is the complete word, but the last is 26. A compound one, the last expression, we use half. After some prefixes, an anti-aircraft gun. With a letter plus noun, like an E, Male. E is a letter and male is a noun. Hyphens are not frequent in British English or even less in American. Uh, it has no been uh, the, the usages which I have explained. This is what archaic. Uh, now uh, the writer preferred not to use hyphen in their writing and they combine usually uh, the words. Like nowadays, it was used with hyphen, but Writers prefer not to use any kind of hyphen in now or days. They write it as a single word. Apostrophe. Apostrophe is used for contraction. When you omit something like is not, isn't, do not, don't, didn't, shouldn't, couldn't, wouldn't, hasn't, I'd, I'll, these are the words where some letter has been omitted and when you omit a letter, you use apostrophe. Apostrophe is also used for, to show some kind of position. This is Ahmed's book. Ahmed's book. This is girls' college. If this is a plural, you will put apostrophe at the end. And if it is singular, like girl, you will put an apostrophe plus S with the word with which you are using an apostrophe. Girl suit, man's boutique, leg of the chair. You use with inanimate objects of, but with person to show their expression, you use apostrophe. Capital letters are used for each letter, each first letter of each sentence. For names of the person, places, companies like Mark, New Orleans, General Motors, personal pronoun I has always been written capital 
names of the books, films, magazine, days of the week, months, holidays, festivals, historical names, nationalities, abbreviations, rivers, ocean, region, races, continents. The first letter of all these have been written capital. Thank you very much for watching. We will be here with more of your syllabus. Don't forget to subscribe. Assalamu